top stories tonight. Kaduna school children of doctors demand one billion naira ransom as President Tinubu rules out ransom payment. Nigeria's first lady restates stiffer penalties for kidnappers. Undersea cable disruption causes temporary internet outage to telecommunications companies in banks in Nigeria. At least 50 killed after drinking herbal portion in Angola. Thank you for joining us. I'm Felicity Ezewike. We begin the news at this hour in Nigeria's northwest, where the community leader of Kuriga village in the Gaidam, Bakusa local government area of Kaduna State, Jibril Aminu, says abductors of about 300 students taken last week have requested for a ransom of 1 billion naira. Nearly 300 school children, some older students and members of the school staff were kidnapped on March 7 in Kuriga town, Kaduna state, in the first mass abduction in the country since 2021. A few of them successfully escaped unhurt. Aminu said the kidnappers called his mobile phone on Tuesday. Nigeria's Information Minister, Mohammed Idris Malagi, told reporters that Tinubu's position on the kidnappings in Kuriga was that security forces should secure the captives' release without any payment to the abductors. In the meantime, the Nigerian military says that it is collaborating with international partners to free the recently abducted students from Kuriga in Kaduna State, located in Nigeria's northwestern region. Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, while giving an update on recent military operations, says that troops are doing all they can to rescue the victims and will leave no stone unturned in their quest to return them back to their families. The hostage situation is an extremely sensitive one which unfortunately is not unprecedented in the history of the ongoing war. The hostages are being held in locations that are difficult to get to but not out of reach. The situation is however indicative of the desperation of these terrorists to avoid troops onslaught by all means. We will not rest until all of this was in this and return. And as I did mention, we have support from our international partners. We have intelligence. However, because it is ongoing operation, there's only so much. Let's also tell you that the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Uluremi Tinubu, has reiterated her call for stiffer penalties for kidnappers in the country. She was speaking when she received in her office at the State House Abuja, the senators representing the three senatorial districts of Lagos State. Senator Uluremi Tinubu appeals to the lawmakers to address enacting security-related laws to stem the tide of the crime. She also admonished Nigerians to help one another. Now, the kidnap of over 250 school children from Kuriga, located in Kaduna, not western Nigeria, has continued to generate reactions. While some citizens have blamed the nation's political elite for not learning from the lessons of the past, Nigeria's military is, however, assuring citizens that operations are already underway to rescue the students. Amadine Uyi tells us more. In 2014, Nigerians protested the abduction of over 200 girls from Chibok in Borno State, northeastern Nigeria. Ten years down the line, another mass school kidnap is sparking outrage among citizens. Some who were part of the movement to rescue the Chibok girls in 2014 say government has not learned its lesson. The lessons learned have not been taken in deep by government, by the successive governments, and so there are gaps over time. Most of um, the issues that 
led to the upsurge in insurgency at those, uh, back in those days, have they been addressed by successive governments? I don't think so. I don't think so. We still have rampaging uh, poverty. We still have galloping uh, lack of access to education, in, especially when you look at the north. The military, however, seen the abduction from a different perspective. While they admit it is unfortunate, they, however, think that the terrorists are trying to get the attention of government. Troops have designated several of the terrorist leaders, their commanders and their foot soldiers, and are fast closing in on several others. The terrorists have exhibited gross cowardice by going for such sub-targets to impede troops' advances. While the blame is being put on the shoulders of the political elite, the military on its own part is assuring citizens it will ensure the rescue of the students. It's about time we speak to the northern leadership, the political elites in the north, and they have been the greatest failure in the scheme of things. Political elites in northern Nigeria, they failed the people, they failed their people, they failed the country. And because you keep seeing the pockets of crisis, the hop surge in this crisis that, you know, you know, uh, bearing up in different parts of the north. Most of the schools are not safe. We are in a state of war. And when you have war, only things happen. And so, Nigeria is no exception for some of these things that happen in war. We will not rest until all these hostages return. With the days already counting, citizens will be hoping the military will live up to its words. In Abuja for New Central, I am Amadin Uyi. Many thanks, Amadine. Still talking security, an expert discusses the wave of kidnappings in Nigeria after more than 250 school children were abducted by gunmen in northwest Kaduna State. Senior security analyst, SBM Intelligence, Confidence Makari, states that the country's security architecture is not responsive enough to stop the menace. In the mid-secondary schools in the north, in the northwest and in the northeast, it's very easy for you, for somebody to move in, engage in such a large-scale operation, and then leave without being, um, you know, without being apprehended. And we said we had, we saw the same thing in Jangebi kidnap in in uh, in Zamfara, where three hundred eighteen school girls were kidnapped. We saw the same thing in Kankara. We're seeing the same thing with the Kaduna abduction last week. What we've seen so far in terms of government response has been more of the same. The vaccination between, we are not going to pay your ransom, and oh, we are doing everything within our possible best to bring the children back home to their parents. And so at the end of the day, it all comes back to negotiating at the back door, paying a ransom, less security for the schools, and more often than not, this same cycle repeats itself because there's a lull in that period, and then we get to hear about kidna another kidnap case in the news. President Bola Tinubu, when he was a candidate, promised that he was going to get more police officers to the police force, um, more recruitment, betterment of the police force in terms of pay structure, and you know, but so far that hasn't been done. Uh, more of the security situation has been more of the same, more the same promises that we are going to get this thing up and running, we are going to we are committed to secure, securing lives and properties, but that hasn't really been seen so far. Nigeria's Minister of Budget and National Planning has dismissed allegations of budget padding by the National Assembly. The minister spoke to newsmen in Abuja saying that the word padding is being misunderstood and misinterpreted to have negative connotations. He says the budget is usually a proposal submitted by the president to the parliament and there can be no appropriation without input from lawmakers. What is the power of the National Assembly as regards to the budget? Again, like I started by saying, there is no, there's no Supreme Court judgment. The, um, the choice of democracy is that in our democracy, in our setting, in fact, the National Assembly have the last word when it comes to appropriation. When people talk about pardon, I think that the word has been narrowed to a negative form 
whereas in reality there can be no appropriation without either addition or subtraction of a sum or agreeing to what was presented or addition of a new project. The Nigeria Civil Service Union has called on the federal government to consider the interest of Nigerian workers while implementing the Urusaya report, which suggests the measure of government ministries, departments and agencies in a bid to cut down costs. The union made this call during the 58th Federal Executive Council meeting held in Abuja, but also urged governments to fast-track the implementation of the proposed minimum wage. My colleague Mavelos Obomanu reports. This is the first time the civil servants are meeting this year. The 58th Federal Executive Council meeting has become imperative owing to the ongoing debate on the proposed minimum wage by organized labor unions in Nigeria and the push to implement the Orasanya report. We are talking about two issues that are of concern. The national minimum wage and implementation of Orasanya report. National minimum wage, we are no longer having the wage that can take us home. So NLC, TUC, and all the athletes, we are on the same page in the struggle. That the government should increase the nomin uh, our national minimum wage so that we can meet up with the current challenges we are facing as a result of high cost of living. There must be a critical evaluation, a critical study of the report, so that it will not turn out to be a policy from our funds. We are interested so that our member will not be out of job. We are interested so that at the end of the day, we will not turn out to be dependent when we are dependent at all. These are our, uh, our focus, and I want to believe that when the time comes, all of us will rally around and get it right. The union members are calling on the federal government to be fair while implementing the Orasanya report adding that some of their members could lose their job and turn to beggars if the report is not critically analyzed and looked into. I'm going to be major of some MDAs in the name of cutting costs of governance. But the union is also standing very firmly that they should be fair in the uh, majors or in the policy implementations. Being fair in the sense that we don't want loss of jobs. We don't want any casualty of loss of job. And we don't want our Nigerian worker to become beggars. Since the removal of the fuel source, the people, civil servants especially, have been very, have been finding life very difficult, despite the wage award. The union is also calling on the federal government to trim down political appointees at all levels of governance to save scarcely needed funds used in running their offices. In Abuja for News Central, Marvelous Oboman. Telecommunications companies and banks in Nigeria have been hit by an internet outage as a result of damage to international undersea cables supplying them with connectivity. The damage affected major undersea cables near Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire and are causing downtown across West and South African countries. The West African cable system. The Africa Coast to Europe main one and SAT3 cables are affected. Some bank networks in Nigeria have been down and unable to process transactions as a result of the internet outage. Telecom subscribers have also been complaining of poor data experience since Thursday morning. You're watching tonight. Coming up, Nigerian lawmakers explore parliamentary system of government we have details after the break. Do join us again. If you've just joined us, you're watching tonight. A reminder of our top stories. Kaduna school children abductors demand one billion naira ransom as President Tinubu rules out ransom payment. Nigeria's first lady restates stiffer penalties for kidnappers. Undersea cable disruption causes temporary internet outage to telecommunications companies and banks in Nigeria. 
At least 50 killed after drinking the herbal portion in Angola. The former governor of Ogun State, Olushegun Oshoba, and the leader of Nigeria's Pan Niger Delta Forum, Edwin Clark, have pledged their support for a change from the current presidential system of governance to a homegrown parliamentary system. This was during an ongoing nationwide consultation for the adoption of the proposed new system, recently sponsored by 60 lawmakers of Nigeria's House of Representatives. Our correspondent, Idong Joseph, reports. It is the continuation of consultations to get the buy-in of critical stakeholders on the proposed bill to transition from a presidential system of governance to a parliamentary system of government. This time, the members of the House of Representatives proposing the bill visit the former governor of Ogun State, Olushegun Oshoba, and the leader of the pan Ninja Delta Forum, Edwin Clark. Our father, our leader, sir, today we observe minutes of silence in the House of Reps three times. Why? All for purposes of issues of insecurity in several places. If we had a prime minister seated with us in parliament, I think that there is no way the prime minister will come back to face his colleagues with this problem still on ground. Speaking after a closed-door meeting with lawmakers, the former governor of Ogun State says that the current system being practiced make those at the center too powerful and think that the parliamentary system of government will reduce wastage, share responsibilities across the board. How can somebody in Abuja stay here? I want to control the primary education in Kanuri, in uh, Sokoto, in uh, Bayesa, in Ogu State. We, 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 we are different culture. Security is very local. When, when people kidnap, if you make security uh, local, people who know their terrain will easily know where these uh, terrorists are hiding. In his address, the leader of the pan Niger Delta Forum lauded the lawmakers for the initiative, saying that restructuring of the country can no longer wait. Otherwise, Nigeria will cease to exist. When you talk about 1931 and 1927, restructuring of Nigeria can no longer wait. The present constitution is a, uni it's a unity form of government drawn by the military because of their hierarchy. Now, today, the president of Nigeria is the most powerful president in the world. They were tasked to revisit the National Constitutional Conference that was held in 2014. In Abuja for New Central, I am Idonk Joseph. The National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, says it is working to ensure that Nigerians within and outside the country enjoy a seamless registration process for the National Identification Number, NIN. Abisoye Koka Odusote, the Director General of the National Identity Management Commission, also stated that NIN registration was free for all eligible citizens and reaffirmed the Commission's resolve to ensure accessibility for all Nigerians in line with global best practices. However, some Nigerians are still facing frustrations in getting their NIN. New Central's Bettina Uweli tells us more. The National Identification Number, NIN, is a set of numbers assigned to an individual upon successful enrollment. Enrollment consists of the recording of an individual's demographic data and capture of the 10 fingerprints. Head-to-shoulder facial picture and digital signature are all used to cross-check existing data in the National Identity Database to confirm there is no previous entry of the same data. It is mandatory for every citizen and legal resident to enroll for the National Identification Number. However, some citizens are not having an easy process. I'm just coming from the NIM office and my requirements as at now is still not yet met. So what will make me happy right now is first thing first, getting my NIM done. I've been suffering for NIM issue since over two months. This time I come to their office here, civil defense office. They keep on postponing me for number, for the NIN. I want to know, is this NIN, is it for sale or for free? Because I've been suffering for this NIN issue, a lack of job since over one month now. I don't have a job because of NIN. 
Please, the federal government look into the matter. The Director General, Abisoye Koka Odushote, has given her words on a comprehensive national identity system that will streamline government services and enhance service delivery. She acknowledges the challenges millions of Nigerians had faced for several months during NIN enrollment and pledged that all issues, including long processing time and administrative errors, will be fully addressed and resolved. We had we listened to the public's outcry on some cases of extortion through the offices of the front end partners. And that is one of the reasons why last year we had suspended them to ensure that we go through the whole process again with them, make sure that whatever loopholes, which is basically the means to which they are basically extorting people, were able to close those loopholes. To ensure that the citizens are happy with our services, we want to ensure that we prioritize the citizens in all, in, to ensure that our services to the citizens is 100% seamless, hassle-free, and also ensure that it's problem-free for them. There are so many difficulties that Nigerians have to navigate on a daily basis. It is hoped that all issues regarding a seamless registration will be resolved so that the NIN is not added to the list of worries of an average Nigerian. In Lagos, for New Central, Bettina Nwili. Many thanks, Bettina. Let's go now to Health Matters. In commemoration of World Kidney Day, Nigeria nephrologists have warned against the indiscriminate use of bleaching creams, herbal concussions, as well as over-the-counter pain reliefs to protect the human body against kidney failures. The theme for this year is Kidney Health for All, Advancing Equitable Access to Care and Optimal Medication Practice. New Centre's Adeshewa Udushoga reports. The World Kidney Disease Day is celebrated globally on every second Thursday of the month of March. This is to raise awareness and sensitize people about the increasing number of kidney-related diseases and how their lifestyle choices are affecting their kidneys. We ask Nigerians how much they know about their kidney and how they care for them. The kidney is very, very important, especially for excretion. It helps us, it's like managing the waste in the system. So for your kidney to function well, that means the waste system, the street system in your body is going to work fine. Mistakenly, unknowingly ingesting stones in food that we eat also can cause like kidney stones and all of that. A nephrologist is a medical doctor who specializes in kidney care and treating diseases of the kidneys. According to reports by the Nigerian Association of Nephrology, at least 25 million Nigerians are battling with chronic kidney disease. More worrisome is that over 20,000 of these numbers come down with end-stage kidney disease requiring dialysis or transplants to stay alive. In the case where dialysis is not done for two weeks consecutively, these sometimes result in death. When we are born, that is, it's something that is called the nephrons, which are the foundational and part of the kidneys. And when you are born, you are born with a definite number of nephrons. So for instance, if I'm born with 1 million nef nephrons in each of my kidneys, and someone else is born with 500,000 nephrons in each of the kidneys, find out that that person is more likely to develop kidney disease than me. And even if the two of us are developing kidney disease, the, person, the other person is more likely to develop it earlier than me. Bleaching creams, herbal concoctions, and over-the-counter pain reliefs have been proven to be one of the leading causes of kidney problems in Nigeria, among other factors. So most of these concoctions are not kidney friendly. And some of them actually are being repackaged in the name of supplements. Hypertension is like rubber band. If you allow it to keep stretching and relaxing because you're taking your drugs at some point and you're not taking it at some other point, it will end up snapping. And when it snaps in the kidneys, the kidneys will fail. According to nephrologists, one of the many ways to keep the kidney healthy is the regular intake of water of about at least 3.5 liters daily to help remove waste through urination and enable balance of the bodily functions. In Lagos for New Central, Adeshawa Dushoga. Many thanks, Adeshawa. You should drink more water. Let's now put a spotlight on Nigerian women making their mark in journalism as we continue to mark International Women's Month. 
While the industry offers a platform for powerful storytelling, the reality of these women can be complex. More in this report. Looking at building a 21st century woman in every ramification. In a field where journalists are recognized with a saying, gentlemen of the press, preferences and accolades are being skewed towards men daily. Other challenges many women journalists face, however, remain discrimination, safety concerns, and the need to balance work with family commitments. But these challenges have not stopped the rise of phenomenal female journalists in Nigeria. You just have to create time for all those things because it's meant to be. They are all meant to be. You as a mother, you have the responsibility of um, giving what it takes to the family. You have to cook, you have to take care of the kids, take care of your husband. Some men always see women as a weakling. Even if you are better than the men around you, they still see you as a weakling. And the first thing when you go for your interviews or to, to I mean, especially when they have any chance or any opportunity, is just to want to, you know, take advantage. I won't say more than that. And uh, it's a major challenge. Also, the rise of digital media has opened new avenues for women. They are leveraging social media platforms to tell their stories and give voice to underrepresented communities. The 21st century woman is a talented woman, breaking barriers and reshaping the narrative. In our own time, we don't have all those things. I can remember in the newsroom, you just have to use your head, you crack with your brain, you do your editorial work and the rest. And um, presently, you have the computer in front of you to do your news, to edit your news, to do all sorts of things you want to do. So that is the benefit of the technology we are talking about. More women should pick interest in artificial intelligence because that is one direction that the world is going now. And if you as a woman wants to um, be ahead in, in the media, in anything you do, in fact, in anything you do now, you must be AI compliant. International Women's Day is a chance to celebrate these achievements and advocate a more equitable media landscape. Exploring the realities Nigerian female journalists face and the triumphs they have achieved, it is hoped that a bright future awaits them. You're watching tonight. Still ahead, lawyers respond to Kunti Kamara's case scheduled to hold in Switzerland. We have details after the break. Do join us again. Thank you for sticking with News Central. Staying in West Africa, civil party lawyers in a trial of former Liberian warlord Kunti Kamara, whose appeal is being heard by the Paris Court of Assize, have reacted to the expected hearing of Aliou Kosai, convicted in Switzerland of similar crimes. Kamara is on trial for abuses and complicity in crimes against humanity during the first civil war in Liberia. Kosha donc est, est détenu en Suisse. Il a été condamné maintenant en appel à 20 ans de prison pour environ 19 meurtres, des actes de cannibalisme. Alors, euh, Monsieur Kosha est entendu parce que euh, il s'agit du même groupe armé, euh, le groupe Fiolimo. Euh, donc, il a connaissance euh, des faits. Euh, son procès comporte des allégations qui sont communes aux allégations qui sont ici. Donc, c'est évidemment un, un témoin euh, important pour ce procès. Il était déjà venu en 2021 euh, témoigné et euh, la semaine passée euh, le parlement libérien a décidé pour la première fois euh, de pousser pour la création euh, de, de, de tribunaux de guerre là-bas ce qui est assez incroyable il y a un nouveau président depuis le mois de décembre au Liberia il y a eu des élections et il y a un nouveau président et donc finalement euh, cette justice que les victimes 
tente d'obtenir à l'extérieur est en train de changer la donne à l'intérieur. Évidemment, on souhaite tous qu'il puisse y avoir justice au Libéria pour les victimes libériennes. Et effectivement, euh, il a été entendu euh, de très très longues heures en Suisse dans son propre procès. Euh, et on a, il a donné énormément d'éléments. Et effectivement, euh, ce, qui est, euh, ce qui est intéressant, c'est que M. Aliokocha, pour démontrer qu'il n'était pas dans une certaine ville, dit que M. Camara y était. Donc leur version, euh, et M. Camara, dans, dans notre procès, ne euh, veut surtout pas dire qu'il était dans cette ville-là. Donc en fait, leurs versions euh, ne sont pas totalement concordantes et on espère qu'on aura des éclaircissements. In Southern Africa, about 50 people have died in Angola after being forced to drink herbal portion to prove they were not sorcerers. The deaths occurred between January and February near the central town of Kamakupa. Belief in witchcraft is still common in some rural communities, despite a strong opposition from the church in the predominantly Catholic country. Chadian candidates for the presidential election on May 6 are submitting their candidatures to the Constitutional Council. The civilian prime minister of the military junta in Chad, Success Masra, and the transitional president, General Mohammed Idris Debi Ibnu, have already announced their candidacies. Vous décidez de ne pas accepter la constitution et toutes les institutions qui en découlent. Mais malgré tout ça, nous avons décidé aujourd'hui de ne pas laisser notre chaise vide. Donc, cette candidature témoigne que nous sommes prêts à contester, même si tout est prévu pour une frotte massive, même si tout est planifié par le gouvernement, de ne pas organiser une élection transparente, nous avons décidé d'occuper notre chaise et puis faire le, 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 le travail nécessaire pour gagner cette élection. Notre candidature de 12 partis politiques qui ne représentent pas 5% de leur nombre ne devrait pas être une raison pour eux d'avoir peur. Oui, tout est planifié contre nous, mais nous avons décidé de contester l'élection euh, de 6 mai 2024 et nous invitons la population tchadienne d'inscrire sur ces projets-là pour sauver ces pays. The Business Desk has today stories. Business news in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. Welcome to Business News. We begin in Nigeria. Nigeria's oil industry faces a potential investment slowdown, according to a report by the Economist Intelligence Unit. The EIU expressed concerns that indigenous oil companies lack the financial resources to replace departing multinational giants. These multinationals have been the backbone of Nigeria's oil production since its beginning. The report predicts a continuation of the trend seen in 2023, with a net withdrawal of foreign direct investment in 2024. The EIU cites a challenging business environment as a key factor. These issues, coupled with unfavorable currency exchange rates for foreign companies, are causing multinationals to reevaluate their presence in Nigeria. The EIU estimates that some companies have already begun pulling back, with Shell's recent sale of its own Shell subsidiary being a prime example. And in East Africa, the IMF's executive board has extended the limit increase on countries' cumulative access to funds, allowing for more borrowing headroom. This is especially beneficial for countries like Kenya, which are nearing the normal limit. Last year, the IMF raised the limit for cumulative access to 600% of the quota, up from the usual 435%, and the annual limit from 145% to 200%. Quotas represent a country's share of IMF resources, and Kenya's estimate stands at about 100 billion shillings. The extension of the temporary increase in normal limits on members' annual and cumulative access to fund resources has been approved until the end of 2024. Kenya has utilized 378.5 billion shillings equivalent to 378% of the quota, leaving it with a remaining capacity of 57.05 billion shillings. Cocoa shortages are causing chocolate prices to skyrocket. 
cocoa processing plants in key African nations like Ivory Coast and Ghana are halting or reducing operations due to high bean prices. This will likely lead to a global rise in chocolate prices. This disrupts the established cocoa trade system where farmers sell to local dealers who then supply processors and traders. Due to the shortage, local dealers are selling beans on the spot market for higher prices instead of fulfilling pre-existing agreements with processors. This leaves processors struggling to find beans and forces chocolate makers to raise prices. Experts predict a global cocoa deficit for the next two seasons, leading to even higher chocolate prices and the lowest cocoa stockpiles in 45 years. These are the business stories we're tracking at this hour. Thank you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasami Peter. The news continues shortly. Bye for now. Business news in association with Money Master PSB. The easy way to master your money. Hello and welcome to Sports. Nigeria's men's national handball team began their 13 Africa Games campaign in Ghana with a comfortable 38-19 victory against Togo. Coach Rafiu Salami's men continued where they left off from the Africa Men's Handball Nations Cup, which was held in Egypt by dominating the match all through and could have won by a higher margin. They will now play Mali in their second match on Friday at 7 p.m. Nigeria time, and a victory for them will see them advance to the semi-final. Mali were thoroughly defeated by African champions Egypt, suffering a 49-16 loss. And to the Nigeria Premier League, where the MPFL has fined aimed by FC and Doma United for misconduct during an MPFL encounter in Aba. According to the league body, the reigning MPFL champions will pay a fine of 1 million naira for not providing adequate security for their last home match against Doma United. AIMBA will pay another 1 million naira for encroachment on the pitch by their fans and other unauthorized persons. The Aba Bay's MPFL side will also pay 5 million naira fine for the disruption of the live broadcast of the match. The AIMBA Stadium will also be closed to fans for their next three home games. The two-time African champions have 48 hours to appeal the decision. And on their part, Doma United have been charged for breaching MPFL framework and rules in the course of their match day 24 fixture against AIMBA on March the 10th, 2024. To foreign football now and Manchester City midfielder Kevin De Bruyne is said to be out of action after he was left out of the Belgium squad for the friendlies against the Republic of Ireland and England this month because of a groin strain. De Bruyne has also been ruled out of City's FA Cup quarterfinal with Newcastle United on Saturday. The 32-year-old was substituted 69 minutes into the 1-1 Premier League draw against Liverpool on Sunday. Belgium will face the Republic on the 23rd of March and England at Wembley on the 26th of March. Manager Domenico De Tedesco revealed that De Bruyne has struggled with the injury for the last few matches. De Bruyne missed the first five months of the season with a hamstring injury before returning in January. Following the international break, third place City hosts Premier League leaders Arsenal on the 31st of March. And that's all we have on sports. It's back to you, Felicity. Sports Update. Brought to you by Corn Oil. Corn Oil. We go the extra mile. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. Nigerian singer Simi, widely recognized for her charts topping hits like Do the Care, has sent waves of excitement through the music industry with the announcement of her upcoming album set to drop this year. Taking to Twitter, the talented artist shared the news sparking anticipation among her devoted fans. With her previous album, To Be Honest, released in 2022, Simi's forthcoming project is anticipated to build upon her established reputation as one of the foremost figures in the Afrobeats genre. Gina Carano, the former MMA star turned actress, has opened up about her controversial departure from the hit series The Mandalorian and her subsequent legal battle with Disney. 
Gina, known for her role as Cara Dune, revealed her struggles with social media controversies and her termination by, entertainment, by the entertainment giant. The rift began with Carano's outspoken views on sensitive topics, leading to a series of contentious incidents, um, culminating, I beg your pardon, in her being fired from the show. Despite feeling unfairly targeted and ostracized, Gina remains resilient, and now she's fighting back with a lawsuit against Disney and Lucasfilm for discrimination and wrongful termination, supported by Elon Musk. She sees the legal battle as a chance to reclaim her reputation and challenge Hollywood's prevailing culture. And that's all we can take on entertainment tonight. We'll take a short break, and when I'm back, I'll bring you the updates on what's trending tonight. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. Thank you for staying with us. Moving away from entertainment stories, I bring you what is trending today across social media platforms. The hashtag National Assembly is trending as outrage over allegations of budget padding has refused to calm. This time, it is involving a staggering 6.6 .6 trillion naira allocated for what is considered by social media users as unknown projects across 20 ministries in Nigeria's 2024 budget. The revelation has ignited concerns over transparency and accountability within the government. Citizens are calling for thorough investigations into the, into the allocation process and greater accountability from the government officials. Nigerians on social media are not taking these revelations lightly. Here's what some of them had to say on X. Let's take those reactions. Ibrahim Bello says, the sleaze at the National Assembly is in Nigeria cuts across party lines. It is very irritating seeing Obi and his stooges berating APC for looting when their own party representatives are hands in glove with those they gleefully accuse. Akin is saying corruption won't walk our streets. Leaders who still wear their brains should stand up for Nigeria and Nigerians now. The fraud between Tinubu's government and Akpabio's National Assembly, if true, must be investigated without any delay. And Chukwemeka is saying, by now, Nigerians supposed don't mount National Assembly gate until they explain this, until they explain this rubbish, they are not going home. Them don't to use us play for this country. Imagine the rubbish we're accepting from these people. That's all we can take on entertainment tonight. But you can join the conversations across our social media platforms. We are at New Central TV. Thank you. I am Jadel Simon. And that's all tonight. But before we go, let's take an auto look at some of the major stories. Kaduna school children of doctors have demanded one billion naira ransom as President Tinubu rules out ransom payment. Nigeria's first lady restates stiffer penalties for kidnappers. Undersea cable disruption has caused temporary internet outage for telecommunications companies and banks in Nigeria. We also brought to news that at least 50 have been killed after drinking herbal portion in Angola. We'd like to hear from you. Please send your eyewitness report to the number showing now on your screen. You can follow us on social media as well, at New Central TV. We're live on DSTV channel 422, Star Times channel 274, Avo TV and on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.